All right, guys, uh, this is example four in the series for understanding how to calculate the true and apparent wind direction and speed if we all incorporate the ship's course and speed as well. So we have the true wind direction and speed as experienced by the ship, but the apparent wind direction and speed results from incorporating the ship's course and speed. So based on the ship's course and speed as experienced uh, and uh, as they experience the true wind, the resultant wind direction and speed is the apparent wind direction and speed. All right, so I have previously made three videos on this topic and I will give you the links to those videos as well. But this is example four uh, in this series. So this is the last example and uh, all the four examples discuss uh, this topic uh, with different kind of questions. So different kind of hints are given to you in the question and then you have to use those hints to find out uh, either the true or the apparent wind direction and speed. All right, so let me start with the question. So the question says that it's 18th of March 2019. The ship's course was 3 to 0 degrees and the ship's speed was 12 knots. So when we say ship's speed was 12 knots, in one hour the ship has made 12 nautical miles. All right. So and then if we keep going, the wind speed estimated by the appearance of the sea surface was about 16 knots. Sometimes they might give you a wind force. So you have to use that wind force and go into the Beaufort's wind scale and kind of estimate the wind speed from the Beaufort's wind surface. But here it's given as 16 knots. That means the true wind uh, is doing a speed of 16 knots. Uh, so the wind, the sea surface, it gives an indication of the true wind. All right. So the true wind speed was about 16 nautical miles, 16 knots, and that means in one hour the true wind would have traveled 16 nautical miles. Uh, then the question goes on and says the smoke from the funnel was observed to be blowing to 030 degrees. So smoke from the ship's funnel was observed to be blowing to 030 degrees. So remember the key words here was observed to be blowing to. So blowing towards 030 degrees. So what you have to find is the direction of the true wind. So you have to find the direction of the true wind because the speed is already given to you. Now, some of the points you have to note here is that uh, the wind speed obtained by the appearance of the sea is the true wind speed. This is something I've mentioned before as well. All right, uh, smoke from the funnel blowing towards 030 degrees that would mean the apparent wind is coming from 210 degrees too. So the, the funnel of the smoke, and if you see my drawing below, it's quite a pathetic drawing. I'm sorry, I'm not very good with drawing, but if you look at the drawing below, you can <laughs> imagine this to be the ship's funnel. So just you can imagine that the smoke was blowing towards the direction of say 030 degrees, right? That is the direction of the uh, smoke in which the smoke was blowing. But that would mean that the wind is actually coming from direction of uh, diametrically 180 degrees opposite to the direction of the smoke travel that would be 210 degrees right so the wind and we always uh, how we always understand wind direction is wind where are they coming from waves go to and winds come from so always remember uh, you always have to find out where is the wind coming from that is the direction of the wind so in this case the wind must be coming from 210 degrees and uh, which is 180 degrees diametrically opposite to the direction of the travel of the smoke and that's why your smoke was going going towards 030 degrees all right so the apparent wind direction then becomes 210 degrees so this becomes the apparent wind direction of course you don't know the speed yet but this becomes the apparent wind direction all right and you know the true wind speed as 16 knots and you know the ship's course and speed so before we start drawing the uh, diagram, you have to remember that uh, all problems on true and apparent wind are calculated using the OAT triangle. So the OAT triangle is a famous triangle <laughs> in the area of marine meteorology to calculate the wind speed and direction. So in this OAT triangle, AT becomes the ship's course and speed. All right, so AT is the ship's course and speed measured from A towards T. OA is the direction and speed of apparent wind. So measured from O, O becomes the origin of the wind direction. So always draw the wind direction towards O. And OT, where T stands for the true wind, OT is the direction of and speed of true wind. All right, so these are the three sides of the triangle. If you draw the three sides of the triangle, uh, and if you know the two sides, you can pretty much work out the third side, whatever is the missing side. All right, so the first thing I can draw here 
and because you can't go back and forward with the question I will write down here the ship speed and the course right so that's the first thing I can draw and I will draw it as 80 and this was 320 degrees and 12 knots right so if I go back that's the true wind that's right all right and then the true wind speed true wind speed was uh, 16 knots and that is OT and the apparent wind direction apparent wind direction was 210 degrees that I showed you before so that becomes the direction of OA all right so what we don't know is the direction of the true wind which we have to find out and we also don't know the uh, apparent wind speed all right so let's start with something that we know so I will use my black pen here and again uh, guys uh, because I work with uh, a digital screen and digital documents my drawing is not um, as good as it, as it should be lines are may not be straight sometimes they are a bit crooked so just bear with me but I'll explain you the procedure so you can do it at home uh, but I try to do it here with you guys so that uh, uh, so that uh, you know uh, step by step what is to be done so see these things happen with me all the time and uh, when i work with digital documents all right so let's start hopefully i will not make a mess out of it so the first thing that you can draw is the ship's course and speed which you always measure from a going towards t all right so uh, if your ship's course is three to zero you will measure it from a going towards t so the first thing that you will draw is just draw a cross all right just draw a cross and that cross gives you some kind of an idea of direction keeping so this becomes the north south west and east and you call this point a so your ship's course and speed will always be measured from a going towards t and now because it's three to zero what i will do is i'll keep a protractor on this uh, and the protractor and i will measure see now this is something very annoying that happens with me and before what I used to do was I used to draw the drawing, drawing beforehand but now this time I've decided that the last few videos I thought no I should draw it with you guys so that you know exactly what to do but that's alright uh, just bear with me so 10 20 30 40 so 10 20 30 40 so go in the direction of 3 to 0 right so what you have to do is basically you have to go in the direction of 3 to 0 degrees because your ship's course is measured in that and I'll show you very soon what to be done and then my speed is about 12 knots so what I have to draw is I have to draw it for one hour which is 12 nautical miles so I have to draw 3 to 0 going towards 2 nautical miles so somewhere like that I go further here all right so what happens here is that if you didn't understand how this is 3 to 0 so you will of course measure all your courses from the north so this measurement here this measurement here measuring from the north is 3 to 0 degrees this is your ship's course and speed ship's course rather all right and what i have done is i have to measure 12 nautical miles so why is that because if the ship is doing a course of a uh, speed of 12 knots that means for one hour the ship must have done 12 nautical miles right so we always make our oat triangles for a one hour vector so make it for one hour vector that means consider everything that has happened in one hour so the ship travels 12 nautical miles in one hour right and that's why the true wind will also travel 16 nautical miles in one hour all right that's the vector one hour vector is what you have to consider now the scale that you have to take is one centimeter equals one nautical mile but because I am working with the digital documents, my scale that I have taken is that one centimeter equals two nautical miles. And that's why if my scale is one centimeter equals two nautical miles and I have to draw 12 nautical miles here. So this becomes one centimeter equals two nautical miles. And that's why I've plotted six centimeters, which equals to 12 nautical miles. That is a ship's speed in one hour all right and this is the point that you will call t because ship's course and speed is measured from a to t 
all right at this point of time you can draw a plus again t so what you do is you draw see things that happen to me all right so i'll what i'll do is i'll draw it again there you go and then this becomes t so what i will do is i will draw a plus sign here all right this is t and then what else do i know i know the true wind speed but i know the true wind direction so what i will do is i will draw the i know the apparent wind direction so i will draw the apparent wind direction which is about 210 and it will be originating towards o all right so it will be originating towards o and uh, it will be measured from a going towards o right so if this is 180 and this is 090 degrees this is 000 degrees you have to draw the apparent wind direction o a so what i will do is put so o will always be the origin of the wind direction which is 210 so you will draw 210 going towards a 190 200 210 all right but you don't know the speed of the apparent wind so you cannot stop anywhere so you just have to draw a line just draw a line you still don't know where to mark it o so i have just put o somewhere here anywhere because you still don't know where o is because you don't know the speed of the apparent wind if you knew that then you could have just plotted o but what you do know is the speed of the true wind which is 16 knots so what you do is if your scale is 1 cm equal 1 nautical mile measure your compass for 16 cm 16 cm will be equal to 16 nautical miles right so use your scale uh, use your compass and uh, let me mark this use your compass and mark 16 cm on your compass if your scale is 1 cm equals 2 nautical miles then measure half of 16 which is 8 nautical miles on your compass or 8 cm on the scale and then put the needle of the compass on t and see where does the compass cut the line of oa wherever the line cuts of oa just draw an arc there something like this let's say all right and then that becomes o and then all you have to do is just join ot so always direction my mistake so always from o the wind originates so o a determines direction of the apparent wind so o t will determine direction of the true wind so in this case this here is equal to 16 nautical miles so if 1 cm equals 2 nautical miles that is my scale then 8 cm will be equal to 16 nautical miles all right and now as you measure from o towards t you get the direction of the true wind now what i am getting the direction is 165 degrees so that becomes the direction of true wind all right so you can see o is towards 165 that's why your direction of the true wind is measured from o so o becomes the origin so you have to see o and uh, the true wind is coming from a direction of 165 so o is the origin right so that's pretty much it that's the fourth example um watch all the four examples and you will see it's all pretty much the same thing except for the hints that are given to you in the question uh the hints uh, actually provide you with the information of uh, true and apparent wind direction and speed the ship's course and speed is more or less always given to you it's either the true wind and or the apparent wind direction and speed that you would have to find out and uh, one of them will always be given to you and you may have to find out the other so you see the read the questions carefully watch out for the hints given to you about true and apparent wind direction sometimes uh, the directions are given and not the speed then you can do something what we have done here and uh, but don't remember or but always remember that enough hints will be given to you in the question for you to be able to solve it all right so if you guys think that this video was good for learning let me know and uh, if you have any questions or something was not very clear to you uh, please feel free to write to me in the comment section i i will see you soon with my next video bye